We're now going to attempt a one-way repeated measures ANOVA. The scenario here is that imagine you're the um, you're part of the marketing division of a toy company and they have developed four toys and they've had 20 children play with each of these toys and then give ratings from 1 to 10 um, for each of the four toys in terms of how much they liked playing with the toy. So we have a completely within subjects design. Each participant has given ratings for each toy. So we have um, a four level repeated measure independent uh, variable. So the dependent variable is uh, liking and the independent variable I which is within subjects is toy type. So download this data and open it up in SPSS. We can see that we have 20 cases and the four toys with their ratings. So first of all it would be good if we got some descriptive statistics and histograms so that we understand the distribution of the data for each toy. Let's start off getting histograms. So graphs, legacy dialogues, histogram. You can only do one histogram at a time, um, but you can copy and paste the syntax and put in shuttle kite and bear and run those to get your four histograms. Uh, we'll look at those in a moment. We'd also like to get descriptive statistics for each of the four toys and make sure you go to options and check on skewness and ketosis. So having a look at these, I'm most interested to look at the skewness and ketosis and as long as they are within uh, the range of minus one to plus one, which they are, then that would generally indicate that you've got sufficiently normal data. And this is further confirmed by our histograms, which look relatively normal, uh, even uh, this is probably the worst one, but there's no, there's no great evidence that there's bimodal distributions or, or, or outliers. And ANOVA has been shown to be reasonably robust to uh, violations of normality uh, where you have at least 20 cases per cell. The next step would be to create a graph that shows the means of uh, our groups. So graphs, legacy dialogues. We could use a bar, we could use a line graph, but preferable is probably an error bar graph. Uh, it's a simple graph and we're going to summarize separate variables. Put in your four toys and this gives us a visual ANOVA, uh, a bit like the visualizing ANOVA example that we saw. We can see that clearly the kite is much more preferred, for example, than the space shuttle uh, because the confidence intervals do not overlap. So we're now ready to run the ANOVA itself, analyze, general linear model, repeated measures. And we need to specify the within subject factor. You can call it whatever you like. I'm going to call it toy type and then click on add. Then define and I can put in my four variables. Then we need to look at the settings. Uh, the main settings to change are here in options. Click on descriptive stats, estimates of effect size and um, power and also let's put in uh, means, marginal means for toy type and overall. Continue and I'm going to click on plots and put toy type in here for plots and I'm ready to go.